Hey Hebrew fans, so today I got my replacement module lock from Super 7. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what he looks like. Now for those that don't know, when I originally got module lock, it had some issues. So I actually sent mine back to Super 7. And they replied right away and sent me a return label. And uh, then I got this. So let's check them out and see if the replacement's better than the other one I got. But now. Uh, it looks better already just from looking at it. I'm looking at this corner right here. I don't see the same defect I saw before. So let's go ahead and uh, continue opening them and seeing how this figure is. That looks pretty good. There's no paint splash. I don't see any extra glue splash all over them. Much better quality. So Super 7 has come through with their returns. They gave me a really good looking figure. So far I'm pretty happy about this. Looks pretty decent. Yep. Even his arm looks okay. Look at that. Alright, so Super 7, thank you. You did an awesome job. I'm going to go ahead and include my review from my first one so you guys don't have to hunt for the video to see what happened in the first video. So just stay tuned and it will start right now. Hey Hebrew fans, this is Todd. So I've decided to open up Modulock. I know before I said I'm not going to open them, but I decided, you know what? I am going to open them. He's kind of cool looking. So what the heck, he's going to be opened. One thing I kind of discouraged me right off the bat is right here you can see he's got some extra black on his leg. I'll probably take some alcohol and clean that off later on. But let's go ahead and open up this module lock and compare him to the other module locks. And I'm also going to show you a little bit of my Hordax while I'm at it as well. So first thing is when you get this, he comes in a sleeve. Now the tricky part is knowing which sleeve goes to which figure. At first I didn't know how to do this because they're all... I had all my figures all pulled out for the last video and had all the sleeves off so you guys could see the figure inside the box. I thought, you know what? If I'm going to sell these, um, people want the right sleeve with the right box. So I was looking all over the box trying to figure it out and there's no uh, barcode or anything. Oh, I guess there's a barcode on the bottom. Hey, look at that. And I could just match the barcode to that to the barcode to that. Which also happens to match with the barcode on the cardboard box. So that's how you can tell if you have the right sleeve or not when you're doing this. All right, that's enough about the sleeves. Let's go ahead and open this module lock. First of all, here's the back. Here is the bio, if you guys want to pause and read that. The artwork is amazing. I really am, the artwork's my favorite. In fact, you can see, here's my filmation, my own version of, of module lock that I made. And I found the head, it was under my chair. And uh, so you can see my version, I tried to kind of match the filmation. I didn't want to actually paint it or anything, but he does have the three legs that are the ones with the extra things. He does only have three claws instead of four, but as you know, Modulock only comes with one hand with three claws and one hand with two claws. So I had to actually change out the hand piece to make this work. But anyway, Enough of that right now. Let's go ahead and open this guy up because that's what you guys are here for. So let's first cut through the tape on top. Pull them out of the box. Look at all those extra pieces he comes with. Now, I'm not really familiar on the full story of Modulock for Filmation. Well, let's go ahead and look and see what the pieces are. I know he's got some kind of hammer. Uh, 
Now I'm guessing this hammer just goes in the place of a hand, is what I'm guessing, that's what it looks like. And I have no clue what this is. I'm guessing it also goes in his hand and then puts a head on there. I don't know. And he has extra hands. Which looks very similar to the hands he's already has on, but that's okay. Extra parts are always cool. And let's go ahead and get Modulock out of here. Now this time they had the rubber bands on the bottom. And they have the twist ties. And the twist tie actually goes around that bottom leg, so we have to actually untwist it to get it off. He's got a twist tie on top. And this one has the rubber band twist ties like we saw with the other figures. So let's do a little tug and cut the plastic right, uh, rubber band right off. So he is out of there. Hmm. All right, so let's go and talk about articulation. So first of all, from the ankles up, he has uh, rockers and doesn't have the same twist Oh yeah, he does. There it is. So he has the same twist as the other ones. And then his knee bends. There's that extra black I was telling you about. Have to clean that off later. Up the top, it bends. And the other side does the same. And then his extra leg has a little bit different articulation. It bends back and forth this way. The knee actually has a ball joint. And so that's actually different. And then the ankle on this extra leg, um, I don't think it has the swivel on it. It's almost more like a tail than a leg, the way they designed it. All right, he does turn to the waist. He has the ab crunch. His armor is glued on. And you can see they got some extra glue on here. And I actually would want it in a little bit different position than it is now, but it looks like it's stuck where it's at because it's glued in place. You can see a little bit, a bit of a hack job of the gluing back there. And then the shoulders move. Sick of that glue. What a mess. And then bicep, elbow, it's ratcheted. And then the hands rotate. And these are extremely sharp. So you can see what it does to my finger when I push it on there. All right, so not really for kids. In fact, it even tells you that on the box, not a toy, it actually says it right on the box. Just to make sure you guys are clear, not a toy, adult collectible. And that's why this, this, this actual video is not going to be marked for kids because these are definitely not kids' toys because they're sharp, they're dangerous, and uh, they're not like the Mattel stuff we've seen. All right, then his upper head. He has the two heads that move individually, and I'm guessing this neck piece comes off. But because I'm afraid of things breaking, I am not going to pull off his head until I soak it in some warm water. So here is my warm water vat. To put Horak in front of it. Put him in the vat. Brrr. And there he goes into the vat. kind of fun all right so while he's in the vat let's go ahead and talk about Hordak while he sits there for three minutes so this was the filmation Hordak figure we got and uh, it's a it's a cool figure it's got lots of cool articulation and everything else and it comes with extra arms so you could take and uh, put the blasters on and I actually got two arms because I had two different Hordaks and then it comes with a little imp. Whoop, that's the wrong one. A little imp. And this is a little imp figure right here. And his head rotates. His eyes are looking forward. So you can see that right there. 
and uh, his other parts are all glued. So the arms don't move, the legs don't move, it's just one solid piece except for the head articulation and that's it. He also came with a cool little treasure chest. Now this treasure chest is not open. The one they had at Comic-Con did open. So this one is a solid clunk of piece. All right, so there you go. There's the imp and the extra parts. Now let's compare it to the other Filmation one. Now the other Filmation one came with a different head. I actually swapped the head out on this one because I like the, the new Filmation head better, but I just like the body of this one better. And so this one also came with an extra arm, but just for one side only, and you could pull off the hand and then have a gun there instead. So that's kind of a cool, fun feature. So this is actually my go-to Filmation Hordak because he has the Filmation head that I like as opposed to the other head they gave us. This was the other head we got originally with it, which is basically a repaint of the classics. But this head is way better. It matches way more of the cartoon. All right, so that's it for Hordak. I'm sure that he is probably ready to come apart. Think. And now you can choose what head he wants. I'm going to put this head on. It's the one he always has in the cartoon with this head being hung onto in his hand. Now, there is no extra piece to uh, put this on first unless you use this. Let's see if it fits on there. Oh! I don't know if it's supposed to be for his head or not. That would be awfully tight. Ugh. Post in the comments what this piece is for. I don't know. All right, let's try the hand swaps. Being they're not really that stuck in there, pretty easy to pull off, and there's not a huge difference between the hands. But they are sharp, so be careful. And I actually personally like it like that. Now, it does look like there's something weird going on with his bicep. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know if the shoulders are reversed or what's going on. Yep, that's what it is. This one, and the arm was, in, was actually packaged backwards like that. So I'm guessing that this shoulder is, I got two left shoulders on my figure. So that stinks. So I might contact Super 7 and say, hey, I got two left shoulders, I got paint scuffs, and the top part where the neck connects is breaking apart. So there's a couple little issues with this figure. And of course, the um, armor is just a mess. Extra glue all over the place. So Super 7, if you're watching, I'm sorry, Brian Flynn, but I'm probably going to be turning this one and asking for another one. Hopefully you guys have some in your service stock. Because I like him, but I don't want a broken one. Or one that's in that bad of shape. I don't feel like trying to fix it and buy another figure just for that two left shoulder deal. Alright you guys. I think that's pretty much it. Let me show you some other Modulocks that you've seen in my other videos. So here's my Mammoth one. My six-legged, two-head, four-armed, double-gunned Modulock. Here is my standard almost humanoid Modulock and because it only comes with one torso here is the other pieces of one of the arms come off on this uh, I better not pull it I don't want to break it before I return it so I had to actually alter the neck on this to get this other head to fit on there but that's pretty cool though right so and then of course after you create your Modulocks you're always left over with a bunch of extra parts and here is my globular cluster of modulock pieces kind of reminds me of that movie the thing uh, it's just kind of moving and growing and you don't know what it's going to become uh, it's kind of yucky when you think about it all right there's my review he's going back to super seven which i write an email and hopefully they'll send out a replacement and uh thanks for watching you guys I will see you next video. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. And I'm telling you, this thing is great. Um, 
I'm really glad I got it. If you haven't seen it yet, what I did was I got a glass cup. The glass cup had a small ring on the bottom of it that held it up. So I used some uh, foam that's made for computer chips and cut it to the inside of the ring and pushed it inside there and it gives it a nice solid seal. And then it has a temperature gauge. And the water is the right temperature to heat the plastic up without destroying it. And it's cool enough that I can actually put my finger in there for a few seconds to grab things out. So that is pretty cool. Hey, Hebrew fans, this is Todd. So I went ahead and got in the mail today my Super 7 last batch of He-Man figures. And this is the, the ones that are the classics and the ones that are the, the large He-Man figures. And we have Roboto, Strato, Shadow Weaver, Modulock, Prince Adam, and Katrina. So let's go ahead and uh, open up these and let's see how cool these figures are. Now I may not open all of them, but I will show them to you at least. Sometimes I like to save a figure to, for later, or I may decide to sell them and don't want to open them. But there's some figures I definitely want to open and see. And I'll do some comparisons with some of the figures in the past in the Classics line. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. One thing that's nice about Super 7 that I like is they add this piece of cardboard on top. So in case you do slice down, you're not going to slice down through the boxes of figures. I think that's a really cool touch. I actually like that a lot. So let's go ahead and dump these out. As you can see, I got my figures set up for the comparisons in a little bit. Ah, uh, uh, mind your lock. He's falling over. Arrgh. All right. Now, here's what's interesting, and something that I actually like a lot, and that is, right here, it tells us, not a toy. This is not a toy. This is an adult collectible. So, anybody out there who, somebody's saying, hey, you collect toys. No, no, I collect adult collectibles. Anyway, so, let's take a look here. We got Stratos. And then we have Shadow Weaver, Modulock, Prince Adam, Katrina, and Roboto. Domo origato, Misto Roboto. Anyway, so let's go ahead and open these up. Modulock just does not want to stand. With three legs, he should be the easiest to stand. So let's see. Um, Shadow Weaver's going to be really cool. Let's hold off on her. I want to open Modulock. I think the only one I don't want to open is Stratos. So let's open up Stratos first and not fully open the box. I think the rest of them are going to be cool enough to open. So let's take a look here. So here we got Stratos. Cover box. Let's pop this thing open. I don't know. Maybe I will open Stratos. I just... Stratos has never been my favorite. Which is kind of funny because I got a ton of them for some reason. And yeah, I'm not going to open them. There he is. I'm just not really that impressed with him. But I do like the fact that his backpack looks pretty small. That's kind of cool. And he's got the same sword. I believe it's the sword that we got with Tila. And then, of course, he has the staff that we have already. So, there is Stratos. He's going back in the box. He will probably be sold probably a year from now, two years from now. And I decide I want to get rid of him. But until then, I'll stick him on my shelf. And he will sit. And who knows, I might come back and open him later. Sometimes I end up doing that. All right. Now the one I'm kind of excited about opening is Katrina. So let's go ahead and open up her. 
because she's really cool. Now, just for a quick look at my Stratoses of why I don't care to open another one, let me show you my collection of Stratoses. So here are my Stratoses that I have. Each one is uniquely different. And uh, this is the one that we got originally and the wings don't spin with it. And then we have the error one, the one that ended up getting Beastman shorts. And then uh, this is the one that came in the two pack with Aquaman. And then we have our comic one. And then these are all customs. So this is my red Stratos with, uh, um, he's made like the regular two pack, except for I put on the, um, or no, he's like the regular one, sorry. The regular one, but I put on the weapons pack armor. This one has new wings from the two pack. And then I have my red Stratos and my blue Stratos. So there we go. Those are all my, actually I take that back. It's not all of them. I also have my go-to Stratos, the one I use all the time. And this is the first one that I ever got. And I took 2000X hands, put them on them, took the, Sty, the Sky Strike 2000X and added this onto his backpack. I gave him a cool sword. And then I went and got a figure called a Blue Devil. He's a DC uh, Universe figure. Sorry for the camera angles. And I stole his weapon because at the time we did not have this cool staff. So this was my, my staff for the in-between. And I've altered his head so he can look up a little higher than everybody else, the other Stratos. So that's my go-to Stratos. So that's why I'm not too inclined to open another Stratos. Um, sorry, guys. But Katrina, let's go ahead and pop her open. This figure I'm waiting for. This will be really cool. I don't have a comparison figure to compare her with. Just because uh, they didn't make her before. Okay, she does look pretty cool. And uh, looks like her uh, weapon actually is more flexible than I expected. Here's the back of her box. There she is from the comic. Oh, not the comic, the cartoon. And that gives a little bio on her. So let's go ahead and bust her out of this box. Funny thing is, for not liking Stratos, I have way too many of them, which is kind of funny, because like I said, Stratos was never one of my favorites. There is one character I dislike more than Stratos, and that is um, Mechanic. Mechanic is always my guy that gets gets um, usually uh, first one taken out. All right, there she is. Let's go ahead and take out her accessories first. Oh, so this is really soft rubber and a little bit stretchy. Um, I'm kind of afraid this might actually break very easily. I may use some other weapon for her. I'm not sure. Here we go. There's a small version of it. And here's some fire. And then let's take off the... Twisties on the back. I wish I would have got two of her. Now I did get extra Prince Adams and extra Shadow Weavers um, just for customs and, and selling in the future. But in, force, in uh, hindsight, I probably should have got two of her as well. She is pretty cool. Maybe I'll go back on a Big Bad Toy Store and see if they got any left. Now, when I did order these, I ordered them direct from Super 7. I did not go to Big Bad Toy Store. So that's where I got these ones from. All right. So I guess it's supposed to hook on to her little thing there. There we go. Watcha! It looks like it's made to go into her leg. This is a very versatile thing. I think it's pretty cool. 
check that out. All right, articulation. Let's go and do a breakdown. So we have the ankle articulation, and it rotates the same. Um, the knees, um, they have a ratcheting motion, and the legs then move, and not much ratcheting there. And it looks like they may have fixed the crotch issue we had with Tila. So it's a bummer that, uh, oh, well, maybe not. Looks like her legs are still sticking out a little bit and low. Um, I may have to take and adjust those and raise them up higher and, and tuck them in more. And then she has a tail. Um, just one point of artic or one directional articulation, just around. There's no other way to move it. And then we have the upper waist. And then her head moves. And her hair is rubbery enough that you can kind of move it around and not have it interfere too much. And then her elbow bends, shoulder moves, wrist turns, and bends as well. So there we go. She's pretty cool. I kind of wish they would have covered her with actual plastic uh, molded fur, but that's okay. All right. Who's next? Shadow Weaver is next. Let's go ahead and pop open Shadow Weaver. Now, I may change my mind after I look at her. I'll see how different she is than the other Shadow Weaver. Yep, she's cool. I'm opening her up. So let's go ahead and check her out. So, let's cut the top off. Okay, here's what's cool about this Shadow Weaver. Now, in the past, we got our super rare exclusive Shadow Weaver that we all got that had subscriptions and the price just skyrocketed on her. And if you didn't have her, you weren't going to get her because it was way too much money. A lot of people were really upset because Mattel kind of forced the situation that, hey, if you don't buy our subscription, there's no way you're getting Shadow Weaver. So that made a lot of people kind of upset about that whole situation. So now we have a new Shadow Weaver, and uh, I think she's pretty comparable from what I can see. Here's the back of the box and her bio. Let's get her out of there. Now, this is really strange. They have these twisties, but then they have a rubber band. So, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a different form. So, you don't have to untwist it. You just cut the rubber band, and she's free. Uh. All right. So, this does indent. So, it's not flat like we saw with the other Super 7 Shadow Weaver. So, I may not have to make her a new uh, um, stand, which is good. She does have a couple different wands, just like we saw with the Super 7 five and a half inch figure. So let's take a look at articulation. This bottom half is one big clunk, but it rotates up here at the top. It kind of bumps me out because this is kind of off center a little bit. Kind of drives me a little bit crazy, but oh, that does turn. Hey. Look at that. She does turn at the waist. I take that back. Okay. No longer driving me crazy. Thank you, Super 7. And then her shoulders move. She's got um, really cool wing structure here. I know it's not really wings, but um, flaps for her um, cape. So it gives the illusion like it's huge without actually having two pieces on here or trying to go through, go through the articulation. This is very clever. I kind of wish they would have done the same thing with the um, sorceress, but very clever. And you can see the articulation that we have here elbow, shoulder. Oh, I'm so afraid to bend the hand. Nope, the hand just rotates around. And then, uh, look, she's doing the Spider Man symbol. And then on this side, same thing elbow, bicep, shoulder, and the hand just rotates around. There is no extra swivel. Anyway, so she has the two different wands, and the nice part is they are translucent, and for those that know me, I do like my translucent stuff and my glow-in-the-dark stuff are my two favorites, so there we go. Cool, cool, and 
she does have a stand. What's crazy is it's not the same stand we got with the five and a quarter. I was really surprised because the other one, oh, maybe it is. No, the other one had a flat surface across here. Didn't didn't tuck in. And let's see how high she stands. That's just about right. Um, she is a little shorter than the other one when she's standing, but I like my um, figures to kind of hover. Now, the face is different on these. You can see the face is different. Um, this one, of course, is more cartoony looking, so very cool. And, of course, the way the backs look, too. And the coloring is also different. Um, the other one had a strange articulation point in the middle that kind of ruined the sculpt. This one, of course, has the bend up higher, so you don't have that same strange articulation. This is also a strange, I mean, it actually does bend there. I'll tell you the truth, I actually like the Super 7 one better than our original Classics one, which is really rare for me. Usually the Classics always wins out. But uh, I like the very clean aesthetic to it. You, even the bat, I like how it's clean. Even though I know it's cartoony, it's very clean. I kind of wish she had her nose, but that's okay. All right, so let's open the next one. And the next one is Modulock. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and take a look at the Filmation Modulock. Now, I plan on opening this one, but let's take a look and see. I might change my mind after I see him. So let's see what he looks like. Here's the back of the... Oops, didn't pull the sleeve off. There's the back of the box. And here is the front. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of cool. I mean, I do have my, my own Filmation one that I made a long time ago. And let's see. Must have dropped the head somewhere. I did have the other head that he'd hold in his hand. So it looked kind of like that. And you can see on mine, I have the three legs and I have the three fingers. I know the filmation shows four, but you only had a choice of either three or two. And I had to swap out the wrist just like I did at the Wonder Woman figure earlier today that I showed you. And so my leftover part guy only has two claws with two claws. So anyway, you know what? I don't think I'm going to open him. He is cool, but just not cool enough. Sorry, you guys. So he's going back into the box. He might be sold later. We'll see. Put him back on the shelf. And if I do decide to open them, then I will do the unveiling opening like I usually do. So just for kicks, I'm going to show you some of the module locks I have made. So this is uh, my standard human guy. And of course, this is the opposite parts of him. And you can see that when you got module lock, you only got one torso piece with it, originally with Classic, so this poor guy got stuck with this piece that's really not a torso piece. And then I have my Ultimate Modulock. It is kind of cool looking. It's like a little bug or something. And then I got my Ultimate Modulock, which is the six-legged, four-armed, two-headed, massive guns, Modulock. And this is my you know, mega modulock. And then of course, like I just showed you my Filmation one, which has the extra leg, which is why um, these guys don't get those legs. So, and usually I have a head in his hand, but I must have dropped his head somewhere. I'll have to find it later. Probably kept knocking him over. Let's see, I see a head around here, nope. All right, let's see who's next to open. Next, we have Roboto. Let's see if he's worth opening or not. If I like his aesthetic enough to open them. Now, I did not bring out all the Robotos that I've made, but I have a separate video on them if you want to search for it under my channel of all the different Robotos I've made throughout the time. I've made some pretty cool ones. Let's take a look. And, uh, nope, I'm not going to open him either. He is kind of cool, but he's just not my main ones that, um, 
my main favorites. For those that know me, you know that I have 11 of my main favorite characters. And uh, my Roboto I have now is more than cool enough. Here's my Roboto. And I used uh, these extra leg pieces on there and painted them silver with a wash. And I made it so you can swap out to have two guns or you can have other, other weapons too. This side only is a gun and a hand because I actually did it the reverse of the other side. So, Roboto's cool. The new one, here's the back of the box. You can check out his bio. Oh, you know what? I forgot to show you guys the bio of <laughs> Watch your lock. Let me pull that back out so you guys can see that. Burp. There you go. Pause to read it if you need to. I mean, he's kind of cool. I don't know. I might open him later. I'll see. But Roboto. Sorry, he is going back into the box, onto the shelf for a later date and time, maybe, or to be sold. All right. Let's see what's next. What's next is the final one, Prince Adam. Let's go ahead and take a look at him. Now, a while ago, we did get a Smiling Prince Adam, and I have an uh, unboxing on him as well. There's Prince Adam. Now, I wanted Prince Adam just for one thing. I know this is kind of messed up. I wanted him just for the lightning blast that he has in there for his sword. So whether I keep the figure or not, I don't know, but I'm still going to open him just because I want that lightning around the sword for He-Man. So let's go ahead and pop him open. All right, there he is. Let me show you the bio on the back in the picture. There is Prince Adam. Looks very cool, awesome artwork. All these have great artwork. And let's go ahead and take him out of there. Um, he does have a giant shield, just like He-Man does, unpainted. He does have uh, his sword. I'm surprised it's not, well, I guess in the cartoon his sword's silver, so, or gray, so that makes sense. Ooh, it's stuck in there. There we go. He does have a special hand for holding the sword aloft. So that's kind of cool. And then we have the power blast sword. Now what's interesting is this giant power blast sword, which is surprising, is actually longer. It's like a super long sword, like his sword extended in length or something. Let me get the scissors out. Now, I don't know if this glows in the dark or not. I will have to test that later. And since I'm not doing this live, I might actually include that clip to see if it glows in the dark. If it does, extra bonus points. But if it doesn't, that's ah, still kind of cool anyway. Okay, so there is that lightning strike. It's made to click onto the sword somehow. But this sword is just so long. I don't really totally understand what and why. Post in the comments if you know why um, they decided to make the sword extra long. It does fit on the smaller one, but not quite as perfect and cool. Interesting. But for me, this is the most exciting part of the whole entire figure. So sorry I'm spending so much time on this. But this is why I got Prince Adam was for this lightning thing. I tried making something like this in 3D a long time ago. And it's just very cool looking. I hope it does go in the dark. That would be cool. All right. He has an alternate head. Which is kind of cool. Is if you have the laughing Prince Adam, you could just pop this head on there and have a... Regular one. Looks like his hair is a little mislocated, though. I'll have to see. Oh, he's got an ear underneath there. Look at that. Extra sculpting that isn't required.
Oh, they got the rubber band thing too, so I don't have to actually spend my time unwinding that. Just cut that right off. And let's go ahead and take them out of there. Okay, there's something really strange, and that is, I don't know if you can see this or not, but his color is actually pink on his arms and his chest um, instead of white. Let me turn this light on. Hopefully that helps so you guys can see that. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me find something white to put up against it. Here we go. So look at her arm compared to his arm. Maybe harder to see in the camera. It has a really light pink tint to it. Very strange. The vest is actually, uh, looks like a new design. And uh, very cool. Let's talk about articulations. I haven't talked about that in a while. Looks like it's the same articulation as the original He-Man did. Boot cut, knee with ratchets, the side with ratchets, forward and back, the waist, the mid cut, but hard to move because of his uh, tor because of his uh, vest, and then of course his arms. And I'm gonna have to look at the Laughing Prince Adam to see if his was also pink. I don't think his was. I would have noticed that. Um, let me know when you get this figure if yours has a pink tint to it or not. And it could just be my lighting, but I kind of doubt it. It might be. That's weird. It does look pink. Let me know when you get yours in the comments if yours has a pink hue to it as well. All right. So there is Prince Adam. Let's compare him next to He-Man. There we go. Now, what's interesting is look how shiny they made this one here. This is Super 7s. And uh, you can tell it's Super 7s because the sword does not spin on the back and it's extra shiny. But they actually put a nice matte finish on here. It's almost too matte. I may hit it with a light um, um, clear paint just to, to change that up a little bit. And what's also kind of interesting is that this wrist goes back and forth, but the extra wrist they included goes up and down. Yeah, that's definitely pink. So now he can hold, hold his sword aloft and get into the pose. And now you could say his phrase by the power of Grayskull. And then you stick him in there. There we go. I have the power. Of course, he has two swords, but you know. This is the one that came with him, and this is the one that came with a, a, a different figure. But I like this one better because it has some silver tones to it. All right. That is it. I've opened all the figures up that I'm planning on opening at this moment. And now I got quite the filmation collection. And like I said, there's some figures I'm just not going to open right now because they're not part of my favorite 11. And uh, I don't really care too much for the new sculpts. Now I really did like the Shadow Weaver. I really uh, did like, of course, her because I never had her before. I just wish they would have given her some fur like Merman or some, or like Merman, like Beastman. Of course, let's take a look at the Beastman they used for filmation. Maybe he doesn't have any fur either. He does not. They made him smooth too. But I guess that makes sense. This is it's supposed to be cartoon drawn. So there you guys go. Like, subscribe, let me know what you think. And I'm going to have to look at the Laughing Prince Adam to see if he is pink as well and if not i may be doing some swap outs for the laughing body with this prince adam all right you guys you know what i want to go get that prince adam i'll be right back let's go and check this for glowing let's see if it does it looks like it would glow let's charge this thing up and let's turn off this light and see ah cool 
it does glow in the dark so there we go thank you super seven that is really cool cool yep. so i've done a search i looked all over and i cannot find my smiling he-man anywhere so i went to a big bad toy store just ordered another one it should be here soon but i wouldn't grab the sorceress out of the package and you could not in the package but out of the box and you could see the difference between her white and his pink it definitely is pink I asked my wife too, and she said, yep, it's got a pink tint to it, which, you know, I don't mind him in his pink vest, but it's supposed to be white, white shirt. Anyway, um, so when I do get my other one, I will check it to see. I noticed the vest is also different on the other one, like I mentioned earlier. And the cool part is then I'll have two Prince Adams, one that has white, and I'll probably give him uh, um, this head. And I'll probably stick this head on here. Or put a laughing head on him. I'm not sure. Anyway. Hey, Hero fans. So, I went ahead and I showed you this Prince Adam last time. And I was disappointed because his uh, color was pink. And we could recognize that because next to the white of her you could see how it has the pink tint to it and so i was like okay i want to get a white one and i think the smiling prince adam is white so i went ahead on super seven and i not super seven but big bad toy store and ordered myself a, a laughing prince adam and to see if he's white or not now it looks like he might be pink as well i'm not sure i'll have to compare the colors later on but what i noticed is right off the bat is his chest piece is different Notice the chest is actually a different style. This is like more cartoony and what I thought they're gonna make Prince Adam look like that more cartoon style where it's solid and goes around as opposed to having the different cuts in his chest. I'm surprised they didn't use the exact same um, aesthetic figure for the new Prince Adam. So that was kind of surprising when I did that. Another thing I noticed which is kind of a little bit annoying is the skin color is different. So he's more tan, kind of an orange tan and he is very white um, Caucasian kind of be more of a yellowish pinkish white tan so um, orange tan like spray tan and this one looks like um, probably the color he's supposed to be so those are some of the differences uh, the vests are also different but I already knew that and we're gonna go ahead and open both of these and compare them and see if you can do any head swaps um, I may just go back and just paint him white just to fix the problem um, I don't know, still debating. Or I could just go back and find an original Prince Adam and just swap out the vest and the head and make myself, because the skin color there is a little closer. Not exact, but a little closer. All right, so let's go ahead and open these up. So I know you've already seen me open Prince Adam, but let's go ahead and do it again. Now I'm probably gonna sell parts of this Prince Adam loose without some of the accessories. So I mentioned before, one thing I really like is the lightning strike. So that is going to be something that I'll probably not include with my loose Prince Adam if I decide to sell them. So let me set that aside. And for those who didn't watch the first video, let's do a quick rundown of this Prince Adam. One thing that's kind of cool is they have this wire wrapped that you usually got to untwist and kind of monkey with. Except for now they've added a rubber band to it, so I have to just kind of pull it. And once you pull it, you can actually cut the rubber band and then get it off very easily without having to damage the figure in the front. Once you got that off, let me set this aside. Just put that, oh, another one down there. Chuck. Push them on out. And there we go. So here is the new Prince Adam. You've already seen me open another video if you watched the other video. He has ankle articulation, boot cut articulation, his knees bend. Ugh. There we go. And they have a slight ratchet to him. His upper thigh bends. His waist turns. He has an ab crunch that's ugh, not very easy to use because the, the rubber vest is very thick. He has a uh, shoulder articulation, bicep elbow, 
lots of wrist movement and then of course his head turns and is easily removable there we go that is the rundown and for those that did not know i pointed this out last time is uh his swords are two different shapes so you see here we got the filmation ones long and then we have the other filmation ones short and this one's a little it just appears skinnier but i don't think the bottom half skinnier i think it just stretches longer for the lightning and the lightning is also glow in the dark as we found out earlier he does come with an extra hand so you can hold the sword aloft and an extra head with a different expression oh and he comes with a really cool shield that's huge and monstrous which would be great for doing flame battles right all right let's set him aside and let's open the other one so here we have our smiling prince adam and i've done an unboxing on this before too but let's just quickly open him so we can do some customizations on him now i actually prefer this style of vest personally now this was a special edition prince adam and it was released because of that youtube video that went viral about him singing um and this is kind of the laughing part of the video when he's singing and so normally you're supposed to put the head back i'm surprised they didn't include a microphone with him and so the box is very sparkly and rainbowy and kind of a cool homage to that viral youtube video all right now he does not have the cool aurora band because this is before they started doing that so we have to actually unwind it all the way now his back he does have a spot to store the sword or the new one does not and which is cool is because the original prince adam which this thing's patterned after did not have that on his back so i might even take just this pink vest and just throw it on one of my prince adams to give it a more filmation -y look i think that'd be kind of a cool way to do it we'll see how much glue super 7 used on it And he comes with a red sword, which is highly unusual. We don't, haven't seen this color sword before. It almost looks kind of Christmassy, which is about the time this figure did come out. And it looks like he might be kind of pinkish as well. I can't tell. You know what? I think he is. It's just he's shinier, so it's harder to spot. But I think he does have, yep, he does have a slight pink hue. So I guess even the Laughing Prince Adam had a slight pink hue to him. So... There's no sense in trying to swap the heads to get a white Prince Adam. So it is time to paint one of these white and uh, give him the white top shirt like he's supposed to have. Now, if I'm incorrect, somebody post a link showing me um, that Prince Adam was originally supposed to be colored pink for his shirt. I'm looking at the back of this box. It looks like there's no pink at all in that shirt. And looking at the back of the other box, where did I stick it? There it is. It also appears like his shirt is white. So, and I'm talking about the sleeves and the mid part of his shirt, not, of course, the pink vest on the outside. So, I question why they went ahead and painted the shirt pink. But, there we go. So, my plan was foiled. That Super 7 did make this one pink as well. I just did not realize it when I first did the opening because it's so light pink. But sure enough, it really is pink. Just very slight variant of pink. And I want it snow white, just like the Sorcerer. So you can see the difference or not. With that slight shade. All right. And of course, his head is stuck on more. So you just take a, a heat to take that head off. And once you get it off, it doesn't fit the same because the upper torso is actually different. So the laughing head does not, or the, the chest does not work with one of these heads without sanding out the head very deep into the socket to make it work. And that's what I had to do last time. I made a Prince Adam I sold with a regular head and uh, it required a whole lot of sanding. All right, so that is my review of these two. Quick rundown, same articulation. Ugh, the knee, the thigh, the waist. And like I said, the chest is actually different. I don't know if you can see that or not. Totally different style. I, I kind of like the cartoon style. I wish we were done with He-Man. 
and then shoulders, bicep, wrists, and he does not have the held aloft hand with him, and then of course his crazy laughing head. All right, so since you guys are here, I'll show you some of my other Prince Adam customs I have made in the past. Of course, this is the original one that came with our Orco, and my Orco I've altered. Orco like, used to like to fall over all the time, and so I added a heavy washer to the bottom. You see, actually, this has two washers, a, a smaller one and a larger one, and it just gave him a whole lot more weight to make it less likely to fall over, more like a weevil. So now you can really put him in some crazy twists and bends, and he won't fall over very easy. So that was the reason for adding the weighted washers in the bottom. Now, we also got this Prince Adam which also has the cool vest thing on the back, or the, the place for his sword on the back. And this was a, a PowerCon exclusive, I believe. Came in a three pack. And I decided to take this to the ultimate and I've done, like I've taken the two pack print He-Man and I've just put the vest on him. So it was the DC version that I kind of put together. And I thought, you know, it'd really be cool to make one and this one I spent a while on to get just right, where I've used uh, Hero 2's boots, the actual uh, shorts and belt was from um, Grizzlore underneath his fur, it has the same color, and then of course the yellow wristbands, and then the blue vest. And this is my homage to the New Origins um, Prince Adam, so that's why I made him, to kind of match the Origins Prince Adam. And then I have my 2000X Prince Adam, which some of you guys have seen before. And I got this sword from the um, knockoff uh, 2000X Prince Adam, which is a giant size Prince Adam. So it's kind of cool. He got the giant cool sword there. And then uh, this is a really easy custom. Basically, I used Heroes 2 gun and I put an old vest on from um, the 80s figure. Onto a regular he, uh, Prince Adam and then use the smiling head. All right. And since I'm here, what the heck? Let's talk about Filmation He Man. So here is the Mattel Filmation He Man. And you can see how cool he is. You can recognize him because the strange ankle rockers he has, as opposed to the new Super 7. Let me pull out a Super 7 one. Uh, nope. It's not Super 7. Here we go. And here's a Super 7 one. You can tell it's a little bit shinier and it doesn't have the weird ankle rockers in the bottom. The boots are way better. But I decided to make some customs out of them. So this was my first custom I made. And this is actually from the DC um, Universe 2-pack, Superman and uh, He-Man. And I painted the cuffs orange to match. And then I uh, swapped out the loincloth, swapped out the boots, because they used to be red put on the filmation harness and the filmation head and this skin color actually matches perfect with the filmation head which is why I use this one because it's a lot of He-Man figures do not match the, this particular skin tone that was used with the two-pack and then of course I made another one with the filmation with the DC two-pack this is the new head though you can see the difference between Super 7 head and filmation head but I like it because it's cool. He's got the yellow cuffs. And then I, of course, swapped out the shorts. Oops. And gave him some boots with the gray things. All right. So I thought, what the heck? I can't wait. So I'm going to start to do this. So I started pulling this apart right here and ripped this open so that I can get it exposed. And now I'm going to pull off this vest and stick it on the classics. Hey, man. Our Prince Adam. There we go. And I already pulled off his vest. This is the one that had the cloth vest and the gun strap. I wanted so I could add a little pinch of glue right there to hold it in place, but sometimes I like to just leave that so I can change it later. 
Well, that's pretty cool. That looks very uh, filmation y. Let's take his head and stick it on there. There we go. There is my new filmation Prince Adam. Now I'm happy. That will work. And I like this vest better than this one, so like I said, I stole the vest from the laughing one and the head from the other one and put it with my classics one, and he is complete. Except for one thing. Uh, give me your sword. You don't need that anymore because I have a new Prince Adam with his sword. Aww. All right. There we go. There is my new Filmation Prince Adam. Vest from the laughing one, head from the non-laughing one. Now his clothes are not pink anymore. Now I got some headless and vestless Prince Adams. Of course, I, this does come with an alternate head. I could stick that alternate head on him. Let's see if I do that now. Alternate head away. Ugh. There we go. Hooray. All right, you guys. For real, this is all I got. I will talk to you later. I got my new filmation, Prince Adam, right here. That will be my go to. Um, just a little disappointed, with Super 7. Speaking of that, I did mail back my Modulock. I got a, a, a thing to mail them back right away. I'm waiting to see if they send me another one or just reimburse me. I guess I'll find out later. So stay tuned for that. You can see how his chest looks on this one too, how different it looks. And I will see you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Bye now.